This, then, is the night which cleared away the darkness of sinners by the light of a pillar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Yesterday, the world was plunged into darkness and mourning. It was Good Friday, the day Christ, our Lord, gave his life for us. We bear witness to this through the liturgy. We bear witness to it and recognize and reflect upon the reality that it is for the price of our sins. And moreover, those who were there on that fateful day, they bore real witness to the gravity of sin. They witnessed it with their own eyes. They saw exactly the cost. Its cost in pain, its cost in suffering and agony, its cost in blood. Its true price, that of death. And as the sun was blotted out at the moment of Christ's expiration, the world was plunged into darkness and sadness at the loss of its Savior. Christ, he lay in the dark and silent tomb. His beloved mother, she, to return home, her hands still darkened by his blood, her heart darkened with the suffering she has endured. Magdalene is there with the Blessed Virgin, her heart darkened with grief from the great loss of her master, which she mistakenly thinks will be a permanent loss. Her tears, which once flowed to wash our Lord's feet, now darken the ground as her guiding light is gone. The apostles, they too come and visit Our Lady with no words that they can find to be able to console, and it is their dispositions which are somber as one's wandering in a darkness void of hope, as they have forgotten our Lord's promise. However, all of that changes. Our Lord he rises again as he said. He replaces grief with joy. He replaces despair with hope again. And he replaces death and sin with the light of grace and eternal life. This is what the liturgy of the Easter Vigil reflects. Lumen Christi like we said as we process into the church. The light of Christ breaks through the darkness of a sinful world. He has conquered all sin, yours and mine, and the sin of Adam. Light flows into the darkened, empty tomb as the angel rolls back the stone, as the light of grace now returns to man. His precious blood once flowed upon the ground, and now it flows upon our altars as the sacrifice of the Mass today returns once again to our chapel. And water from his side pierced with a lance which flowed all over Longinus now flows over the head of catechumens as a baptism opens heaven for them 
on this day. And baptism, this is the primary source and reason for today's ceremonies. The sacrament of baptism. Men, wandering in darkness, become children of the light, the sanctifying grace. The ceremonies, while certainly still long today, are just actually a small portion of what they used to be in the early church. We begin around the hour of nine in the morning because this is the time of tears and it was when the catechumens would arrive for their pri the final examination. We then follow this up by blessing the fire because the early church would bring new fire struck by a flint into the church before vespers, which, of course, we find at the end of today's ceremony. And it is for this reason that it ends around the hour of noontime, before the ceremonies would continue on into the evening and all into the night. And Vespers was that point in which the fast could be broken. Men would not be able to eat at all for the entire day until the conclusion of that hour of the office. But as the church moved on, soon it decided to move Lenten Vespers up earlier to the day, to noontime, at which point the fast could be broken. And it is why our vigil happens and our fast ends because we anticipate tomorrow's great feast. The Paschal candle is blessed with the beautiful chanting of the exalted. This candle stands above the rest. It is wider, it is taller, and it is lit alone first from the triple candle because it represents the pillar of light that guided the Israelites through the desert after their escape from Egypt. Just as we follow it into the darkened church representing the light of Christ there, the pillar before us, to guide us on our way to paradise, the new promised land. The prophecies which follow are specially chosen as a final instruction to those catechumens. Lessons from our past foreshadowing their future life in the church. The creation of light to separate darkness. The beasts obedient to God like Noah and following him into the ark. The ark itself symbolizing the church as the vessel of salvation. Isaac carrying the wood for sacrifice as Christ carries the wood of the cross and how every Christian also must carry his own. The Israelites parting, uh, passing through the parted waters towards their deliverance, as we must all pass through the waters of baptism to be delivered unto salvation. It goes on and on, these prophecies and their importance. It is a lesson, it is a culmination as Garanger says in his liturgical year, all of Lent is meant as one long retreat. The liturgy giving us constant aspects to meditate upon, to solidify our faith, to realize its greatness, to see that pathway towards salvation. 
And finally, after the lessons are done, the font is blessed, the catechumens are now baptized, sorrow is turned to joy, light soon gloriously returns, and the fruit of Christ's sacrifice, which we honored yesterday, our redemption, is there realized. Today is a day to rejoice, my dear friends in Christ. To rejoice for us all, having received such a glorious gift of baptism. For us, having at that point in our own lives, heaven opened up for us. For us, having retrieved what was once lost, sanctifying grace, all this and more are ours, the great treasures of our Savior. And so, when you go forth from here and begin to return to your lives as normal, and when you see the world around you, and whenever the darkness that appears out there in the world starts to feel like it is overwhelming, and you begin to wonder if all is hopeless, if everything is lost, if it's all for nothing, remember that by your baptism, you bear the light of Christ in your soul. And this light will always conquer the darkness. May God bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.